All right, so in this equation, excuse me, this question, they want us to write algebraic equations and numerical equations that kind of define each of the properties here. In other words, they want us to generalize it with variables and give specific examples. So let's take on the additive and multiplicative inverses first. The inverse property of addition might also, also or is often referred to as uh, opposites, right? This idea that if you take any number like 3 and add its numerical opposite, right, you get 0. This goes back to the idea of a number line. All additive inverse numbers sit at an equal distance from 0. So it makes a perfect balance, right? So if I add 3 and then take 3 away, I get 0. Or if I take 3 away, I'm back at negative 3 and then add 3, I always end up back at 0. These things undo each other, right? This is the design of our number system. These two numbers are referred to as opposites, but that's also the additive inverse property. And the inverse property for addition ends in zero. So any equation you set up should look something like this. You could say, well, x plus negative x is equal to zero. And that could be your additive inverse property. The multiplicative inverse property you often talk about this whenever you mention the idea of a reciprocal, right? Or reciprocals in general. Here the idea is if you have a number like 3 and you multiply it by its reciprocal, that's the number flipped upside down in a sense, you know you have reciprocals if the product is 1. And we do have that. 3 times 1 is 3 over 3. Well, 3 over 3 is just 1. So here, when you result in a 1, you know you've reached um, the multiplicative inverse property. Um, because that is the multiplicative inverse identity. So again, step back a second, when we add opposites, we get the additive identity. This will be helpful for tougher questions. And when we multiply reciprocals, or right, the multiplicative inverse, we get the what? We get the multiplicative identity. And we'll, we'll talk about those in a moment. Just remember that the identities are numbers that don't change your value for that operation. So for multiplication, if you multiply by 1, nothing changes. But for addition, if you, if you add 0, nothing changes. So you can keep track of that. Now generally here you could say that any number x times 1 over x is going to equal 1. This is the multiplicative inverse property. And just to show you this also works for um, fractions, 2 thirds times 3 halves. Well, these are reciprocals because if we work this out, we get 6 over 6, and that's 1. So these are reciprocals of each other, and this shows you the multiplicative inverse property, right? So, so that, that kind of leads us to the next two steps, the additive and multiplicative identity. Here, the identity, the idea of the identity is that 1 is your identity. Uh, 0 is your identity, excuse me. So if I take 3, and if I add 0, I get 3. So there's the identity right there. And you can tell you're looking at an equation that deals with the identity because whatever you start with, you end with, so to speak. Or if I start with a 3, I add the identity, I still have a 3. So in general, you could say x plus 0 is just x, right? We end with the, what we started with. So we have that equation right there. And lastly, we have the multiplicative identity. Well, here, if I take any number, multiply it by 1, right? Let me just fix that. I want the arrow to point to the 1. Right? 1 is your multiplicative identity. Right? So if I take anything, multiply it by 1, I get what I started with. Here, if I start with 3, I end with 3. So in general, you start with any number, multiply it by 1, or divide by 1, and you get itself. Right? You, you end with what you started with. So we can generalize that really quick. All right. Um, hope this helped.